Well, hello there. I'm after testing some antennas today. So I came out to the, I say the field, the woods, with the intention of flying my normal spot and the Forestry Commission were doing work there and it's all closed off. So after wandering around the woods for about an hour and following some trails I've never tried, I've actually found this place, which looks, I think, pretty spectacular in its own right. So if you haven't figured, in order to test the antennas, what I thought I'd do is put them in a really difficult RF environment. So where we've got uh, trees and that, which are going to block, even if we fly up and just come around a bit, we're going to get a blocked environment. So we can try on a skew and then move to some of our directional antennas to see what happens. The only problem I find with trees and trying to get uh, a sort of a, a test lap and then retrying it is I'm completely lost all the time. Normally in the woods I get lost instantly and it's only the sound of the props and working out which direction it's coming from which is leading me back to myself. But we'll try it, we'll see what happens. Okay, this is my default setup. This is a skew planer antenna from Big Nose 13. It works really nicely. You've noticed, um, if you've watched these videos before, I've just installed the diversity uh, module, which I don't usually have. And you can actually see these covers. This is the Relac 5.8. This one hasn't really been used. It's still white. This one's been out in the sun. Look at the uh, discoloration. It gets interesting. So I just wanted to run through the things I'll be comparing to. So this is my normal skew. This is the Biquad. Um, especially produced for linear antennas, which uh, Tommy D makes and I used in the video last time I was looking at antennas. This is the Bandicoot Linear Patch Antenna from Menace RC. Several people asked me if I could test this after the last video, so thanks very much for Greg at Menace for sending this along for testing. And from Demon RC, this is the Boss Crosshair Antenna. Brilliant names. So many thanks to Adam at Demon RC for sending this one over for testing, which is not specifically for linear, uh, but is obviously a high gain antenna. Now, when I'm testing the diversity, I'll have the directional antenna on this one and this skew on this one. So that's how it looks for the Bandicoot. Here we have the Biquad. Now, for the Demon RC, the diversity is slightly different because they also sent me this cloverleaf antenna which is brilliantly called a pimp. <laughs> Great names. So that's that's the difference there. My actual reason for talking to Demon in the first place was these V antennas that a few people mentioned as an alternative to um, a linear dipole. More about these later. Bit of a fail testing these because I crashed so much but let's get back to the testing. So for this testing I'm going to be using a little Aurora RC105. Uh, You'll notice it's got a tiny little dipole antenna for the VTX. So here we go with the little QAV105 and it's quite a useful one to use as I found the skew in it is pretty tiny so it starts going quite bad reasonably quickly which means I never quite get to the end of this path here back to the the main path before I turn around. So I figured this would be a nice benchmark however there is a, a bit of a problem to use this one. Uh, have a look at what happens when I'm just sort of coming back to bring it in for a landing here. Come around and wouldn't you know it, hidden branches, which I think the FPV community has pretty much adopted as scraggle now. Well, that crash unfortunately took out the little linear dipole um, and I haven't got another one. So I've moved up to the backup quad, which is this Vera 110, which was made from an Aurora RC. So yeah, this is the Aurora 100 made by Ishin, which is different, of course, to the Aurora RC QAV105 that I was using. You'll notice that the Fira is slightly better on the signal. It's got a bit of a longer skew, and it's slightly more out of the way of the other things. Um, and it comes to, uh, you know, a lot of people ask about, you know, what distance am I going to get with this and that, and what happens if I use this? A lot of the things come down to many, many more bits and pieces, uh, antennas, positions on quads, positions away from other electronics, all sorts. But anyway, here is uh, the Fira skew, so we can have a comparison now. And here's everything at once. I've tried to get the timing right, but, you know, it's it's a little bit up and down in here. It's not quite right. But hopefully you can see what's happening compared to everything else. And I have to say, there's not a huge amount of difference in this. Certainly, just to skew on its own gets a little bit more interference than using one of the directional antennas on their own. For me, um, I felt, um, although it's not particularly noticeable on the DVR, that the crosshair was actually the strongest signal all the way through. Of course, you might feel different, and that's why I wanted to put them all side by side like this. 
Now, during this time, I had a few crashes, nothing too serious at all, but my intention was to take the dipole off and put the V on, but the little UFL connector actually ripped off. I managed to go out and find that tiny little dipole to use on the QAV. So I went back and I flew it with the diversity setup, and here's the uh, results of that one. Again, everything together. Hopefully you can see where the breakup is and where the breakup isn't. So once again in the test for me and how I felt is that the crosshair was giving me the best signal with the diversity setup. Um, it's hard to tell it came second, the biquad possibly, then the bandicoot um, and the skew on its own not as good. But uh, again I'll, I'll leave you to have a look and you can tell me because it's quite close I think. Now, all during this testing phase, I was also having a bit of a fly around because I wanted to see just, you know, how it would feel in general. And plus, you know, it's always fun to fly around trees. Now, unfortunately, flying around trees in this sort of condition isn't easy because of all these little branches. So I had the odd coming together with the ground and basically killed a couple of props. Now, the only reason I mention this, of course, I wanted to go and test the V antenna out. Now, the V isn't a gain antenna, so against the dipole, it doesn't look a whole lot different. Putting it in conditions where there's other people flying around would uh, should show uh, its strengths there. But what had happened is after this, I took another tumble, did another prop, and basically I killed all the same directional props and had no more. I just had two broken quads essentially. So what are the conclusions? And I think it's quite handy here that we have some positive and we have some sort of so-so conclusions because there's no magic bullet in um, antennas and getting a good signal. And I'm often asked in the comments about what do I need to go this distance or if I put this antenna on or this VTX, what will it give me? Um, and it's it depends is the answer. There's so many depending factors on the type of signal we're gonna have and the amount of distance you're going to get and all sorts like this. But rather than trying to work back from the theory about what should be the perfect environment and antenna and how you set that up, what I want to do is give a sort of more real world test. Here's like a typical flight through some trees, here's a bunch of antennas I did, here's the difference. And I should mention that it's 25 milliwatts on both VTXs, but you can see straight away that the um, the little Fira here which has this uh, TX03 VTX was getting a better signal than the QAV105. Could be down to the position of the SKUs, can be down to the VTX as well. So the thing I took from this is that the SKU does an okay job, but it was definitely enhanced by putting a directional antenna on there as well. And certainly working in diversity helps, especially when you go behind yourself. Now I was going to show some of the footage when I flew behind on myself with the directional antennas, but because I actually had the diversity system there even though there was nothing plugged in it I could see because there was a little bit of light leakage as I flew behind myself it switched to the empty antenna and got a better signal that way than it did with the directional so there wasn't much point so if I had any recommendations it would be if you've got a diversity system certainly get a directional antenna as well now I'm not going to say this is the best get it because it depends on your circumstances so I felt that uh, the boss the crosshair was probably the strongest um, but at the same time, it's kind of bigger and it sort of weighs down the goggles a little bit as well. So although the Bandicoot was probably the, the worst performing of the directional ones, but still pretty good, it is so small and convenient and doesn't weigh anything on your goggles, and that's quite good. And the bike one did very well as well. I just, it's kind of a slightly delicate feeling. Now I must admit, this was a prototype, so hopefully that's been strengthened up a bit so you don't have to treat it so with kid glove. Again, kind of heavy, so some of it's about comfort, some of it's about what gets the best results, and some of it's about can you carry it around easily enough. But certainly worth getting one of these if you've got a diversity system. Um, if you've got it as a single antenna, it's not quite so good because it does limit um, how you can go around yourself, in which case I'd say get a decent skew. But I'll be back to do some more, both on the directional type antennas in different sort of circumstances, and of course to test out the Vs to see how these work. Now, the specifics of these is that they're supposed to be tuned better to a specific frequency or frequency range than other antennas. The way these will potentially show their strength is when you've got other frequencies active 
and see if these sort of avoid all that crosstalk and stuff. But we'll sh we shall see. Meantime, I'm waiting for a bunch of props and working out a way of fixing this UFL connector. Hope that was useful. Any questions, of course, stick them in the comments and I will catch you next time. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.